2 Samuel 22, verse 1 through 34, the title of my message tonight is Waiting with Hope. Waiting with Hope. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation and my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. Verse four, I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemy. When the waves of death come past me, the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. When the sorrows of hell compassed about me, the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I called to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Verse 8. Then the earth shook and trembled, and the foundations of the heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. That means he was angry. Then went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. Verse 10. He bowed in the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly and he was seen among the wings of the wind. And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. Verse 14, the Lord thundered from heaven and the Most High uttered his voice and he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared and foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. Verse 17, he sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Verse 19, they prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay, which is a way of saying my support, okay? Almost like when you lean on a cane or when you lean on something that you have to lean on or you're going to fall over. Verse 20, he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and I have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and as for his statutes, I did not depart from them. I was also upright before him, and have kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore, the Lord hath recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his eyesight. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. Verse 27. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. And the afflicted people, thou wilt save. But thine eyes are upon the haughty, that thou mayest bring them down. Verse 29. For thou art my lamp, O Lord. The Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, by my God I have leaped over a wall. You remember the song, I will run through a troop and leap over the wall. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 31, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and my power, and he maketh my way perfect. Verse 34, he maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Father, I just thank you tonight for your word, your word that comforts us, Lord, the words that come from a man who has lived through and has walked with you through some of the darkest valleys that could be imagined. And Lord, I just thank you tonight for your word. And I thank you, Lord, for your presence that is upon us. And I just ask that your word would be in our mouth that you would give us ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. And we just ask it in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. Now this is a chapter that is dedicated to David's reaction after that he had been running from Saul and finally God gave him the victory. Now I want to look first of all at this word trust. The word trust, the same word that Job used in the Hebrew when he said, though the Lord slay me, yet will I trust him, is a Hebrew word that means waiting with hope. How many of you know we're not just waiting, we're waiting with hope. And we are looking for the Lord to move on our behalf. You see, David had to learn from a young age how to trust in the Lord. No matter what the circumstances were, no matter how difficult things became, one experience after the other slowly built his faith and enabled him to face the next situation that he was going to go through. It's almost like a training regimen, isn't it? He starts out with something small, the Lord brings him through some small situation, relatively small, and then the next time he's a little bit stronger, God brings him through a more difficult situation. And things just continue to escalate over time. You see, David was a shepherd boy. And I've often thought about what it would be like to be a shepherd for the time of Christ. What would it be like to be out on a hillside somewhere? You don't have a flashlight. You don't have a lantern. You don't have a shotgun. You don't have a 30 odd 6 You don't have a pistol. All you have is a sling to handle whatever you need to handle. And you're out there, you're a young man, and you're looking at these sheep, and not only worrying about your own safety, you're trying to protect the sheep. And that, and that was his situation. I submit to you that his faith and trust became in the Lord. I don't even know what I'm saying. His faith and trust was in the Lord. Lord, if you don't save me, I'm not going to be saved. Lord, if you don't intervene in this moment, I'm not going to have intervention. You're the only thing standing between me and total destruction. There's a verse of scripture that I have quoted many, many times since this pandemic started. And when my wife would get out of the vehicle, I always lay my hands on her and I pray for her. And often one of the verses that I quote is, and it goes like this, unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. How many of you know that's true tonight? Unless the Lord is guarding the city, the people standing watch are just doing it in vain. Because the Lord is the one who is in control. The one is the one, Lord is the one who is watching over all of our situations. You see, David went through one trial after another. And he was experiencing these trials with the Lord. He was learning to trust in God. And that's an important thing. You see, that's what we have to do in life. We have to learn to trust in the Lord. I think about how when a person is working out or where they're getting in physical shape, you don't start, start off lifting the biggest barbell in the gym. How do you know what I'm talking about? You got to start small and you start with something light and you lift it for a while. Then you get you can lift that pretty easy. Then you pick up a larger weight and you begin to lift it and so on and so forth. And we get stronger and stronger in the things that we are dealing with. Now on a spiritual level, this is what happens. We go through trials and we go through harder trials. And I can tell you, saints, that in my experience, the most difficult trials that we will ever go through in life are the last trials that we will go through. And I have seen this in people's life. And often when I say this to people, they get a little upset and they get a little up in arms, but it, it is behooving us to prepare now for the trials that are to come. Now, the Lord will bring us through it if we will keep our faith and trust in Him, but we have to prepare ourselves now. Now is the time to build our prayer life with the Lord. Now is the time to put the Word of God and the Scriptures to our memory so that in the time of trial, we can call upon the name of the Lord. I remember one time that I was out in the woods, and I might have told you this story one, one time I was out there, and I thought, you know, I think rather than going around, I'm going to take a shortcut over this cliff. Right? I'm just going to scale it down. I think I can climb down these rocks and everything's going to be okay. Well, this is about 30 feet in the air. And I started down the rocks and I thought, well, if I start slipping, I will just grab this, this tree over here and I'll hang on and I'll just, you know, shimmy down the tree and I'll be good. Well, guess what? My feet slipped. And when they did, I caught that tree and it caused me to do a complete somersault in the air. I landed on the back of my neck and did a flip down the hill. 
My body folded up like a pocket knife and I thought for sure I was a goner. I mean, my feet touched the ground and my neck from the opposite way. And I said, and, but, but instinctively in that moment, I began quoting scripture. I mean, it was just automatic. It just came out of my mouth before I knew what happened. I mean, I mean, it's almost like if you stepped on somebody's foot and they jerked their leg back. That was how instinctive the word of God began to come out of my mouth. And I began to quote from the Psalms and all kinds of things. And God raised me up and I made it back to the house. And I ended up being okay. But I could have been killed in that situation. The Bible said he will give his angels charge over thee. And in their hands, they will bear thee up, lest I dash thy foot against the stone. And that was the situation I was in. But saints, now is the time to prepare. You know, you don't want to get in a situation where you're not ready, you're not prayed up, or anything like that. I remember Brother Birch, he would often say that, you know, when my phone rings in the middle of the night, and it's somebody with an emergency, I don't have time to get right with the Lord. I don't have time to go down beside the bed and pray through or anything like that. I've got to be ready at a moment's notice with, with what God wants me to do. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be prepared because we don't know what the circumstances are that we are going to face. What did David deal with? First of all, he was out in the field. He was dealing with the darkness. And I don't know about you, but I don't like it when it's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face. Especially out you're hearing all kinds of sounds and stuff. And it's not like over here where, you know, you may have some animals and things like that. But they had all kinds of animals that could kill you. They had lions. They had bears and all this type of thing. And he had to trust in the Lord. But what did he do? The scripture says that he took hold of the lion. He took hold of the bear. And what was God doing? He was building his spiritual muscles to prepare him for the next battle. And then what happened? Well, He's out there, you know, bringing his brother some food. He looks up and he spies out. He sees this Philistine who is defying the armies of the living God. And what did he end up doing? He told them, I will go out and I will fight with this Philistine. Why is that? It was, it was because David thought that he was so tough that he thought that he was the man for the hour. No, his faith and trust was in the Lord. He wasn't a big man. He just had big faith. He had big confidence in God. And when he got out there, he knew that God was going to deliver him. He knew that the Lord was going to bring him through. And you would think, you know what? This is the pinnacle. This is the highlight of David's life. But you know what? He was just getting started going through difficult things. He was just getting started. And it's an amazing thing. What did he say in this psalm? He talked about how he walked upright before the Lord. The importance of making sure that he kept his life clean before the Lord. You know, when we go through th things, saints, when we go through things, it is so vitally important that we recognize that that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to live our life upright before the Lord. And sometimes things that we go through are a chastening, especially when somebody is away from the Lord. And you know what? God is never at a loss for means of dealing with folks. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. And it will not be comfortable a lot of times. You say, well, Brother Robert, why do people go through really bad things? Well, oftentimes it's because God has a purpose in what's happening. We may not know what it is. We may not understand it, but God has a purpose. In David's case, what was he doing? He was getting him ready to be the king of Israel. He was teaching him to trust in the Lord no matter what had happened. Not to lean to his own understanding, not to lean to his own strength, not to lean upon what he thought he ought to do, but to trust in the Lord. This particular psalm, if you like, this particular writing that is played out here in 2 Samuel 22, was as a consequence of God giving him the victory when he had won the battle over Saul, who was trying to kill him. Think about it. He was trying to hunt him down. He was a hunted man, but God continued to give him the victory. I want you to notice some things that he says here that are so powerful. He began to see God in a completely different light as God would deliver him. It wasn't as simple as saying, oh, you know, the Lord deliver me, praise the Lord, and then move on to the next thing. He began to see God for who he is. 
He began to see God in the power, in his regal power and authority. Notice this, verse 7. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I called upon my God. He did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter his ears. And the earth shook and trembled, and the foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was robbed. Now, these are not literal things. This is picture language. This is figurative. But he began to see God in the way that God was responding to what was happening. And it is a powerful thing. What was happening? He was growing in his understanding of the Lord. He was growing in the knowledge of God. And sometimes we have to go through things, difficult things, so we can see God in a new and fresh way in a more powerful way. How many of you remember Job at the end of his life? You don't talk about somebody who was going through some stuff. I mean, you imagine here one day people are lined up to bring you bad news. You know, your children are dead. Everything you have is lost and all of that. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the devil went back before the Lord again and said, well, skin for skin, all that a man has will he give for his life. You know, touch his body and he will curse uh, to your face. But what did he do? The Lord said, no. He said, you can touch his body, except you can not take his life. All of his worst fears came upon him, including his wife wanting to curse the Lord. So it was like he was completely distraught. You read about it over chapter after chapter. But I want you to notice something that he said at the very end of the book of Job. He said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye see, seeth thee. And I abhor myself, he said, in dust and ashes. What had happened? The trial that he had went through, all of the things that he had suffered, had enabled him to see God in a way that he had never seen him before. And he came away closer to God than he had ever been, had a greater knowledge of God than he had ever had, and had a greater testimony than he had ever had. But when he spoke of the Lord, he could speak from a position of experience. Yes, this all happened to me, but the Lord brought me through it. The Lord brought me through, and I am praising the Lord for it. And that's the thing. And this is what David experienced as well. He saw the Lord moving powerfully. Verse 12, And he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him, the coals of fire were kindled. Verse 14, The Lord thundered, from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. You see, this is David getting a revelation of who God is. I think about Isaiah chapter 6 as well. Here was, here was Isaiah. He was in this situation where his cousin Uzziah had died. And what ended up happening? The Bible said that in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I also saw the Lord. And he was high and lifted up. He got a revelation of God because God wanted him to understand more about himself. Yes, he had just lost his cousin, probably was close to him, and he probably wondered, Lord, why did that have to happen? Why did he have to, have to die a leper? And I've said this before. But it was because God wanted him to understand more about himself. What did he see? Well, he saw the doorpost in heaven shaking. He heard the voice of the angels crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. See, he came away from his experience. He came away from his loss with a greater understanding and a greater revelation that he had ever had before. And saints, that's what the Lord wants. He wants us to draw near to him. He wants us to learn about him through the circumstances that we are going through. I remember, and I think I told you this story one time, that there was a dear lady who I had met at a jury duty. So, <laughs> how many of you love that, right? You know, enjoy this jury duty. You get this little thing in the mail, it's like, great, right? I had had it in my heart, a very similar situation to Marlon Adams. I had had it in my heart to talk to one of my cousins. And she had gone through a terrible situation, and I just thought, you know what, I need to talk to her. And I, and I just had it before the Lord, you know, Lord, open the door for me to be able to talk to my cousin. Well, I got, a, I got this thing in the mail, come down, you know, you need to do this uh, jury duty. So I went down. Well, I get down there, and the crazy thing happened. I mean, this thing must have had four or five hundred people. 
I mean, there's people as far as the eye could see. There were so many, there was chairs were full, people were standing everywhere, they're calling people's names. And this lady who was sitting beside me was a woman of God who began talking about the Lord. And she told me a couple of different things that I've never forgotten. The first thing she said is, she said, you need to always humble yourself as a little child before the Lord. Now, this woman was probably 90 some years old. And she started waving her hand like this on the ground. She said, humble yourself as a little child before the Lord. And the second thing she said nearly terrified me. She said, every trial you go through in your life will be worse than the one before it. And I started to brace myself at that moment. Hmm? Because I thought, Lord, if this is a prophetic word from you, I'm in for quite a ride. Because I've been through some crazy stuff in life already. And that's what she said. And I'm sitting here talking to her, and all of a sudden, I hear a name called. Guess whose name it was? It was my cousin's name. And I just folded up my Bible. My book that I was reading wasn't a Bible, it was a Christian book. Folded it up, grabbed my things, said like this, and said, Lord, let's see it. They called one more name, somebody way in the back on the other side of the room. The next name that was called was my name. I walked to the front, was standing right beside my cousin. We walked up, we went upstairs, sat down beside each other. The judge said, well, it's about lunchtime, so I think it's time to dismiss. And what ended up happening? We went and talked, had lunch together, came back, they dismissed the trial, we all went home. You see, God had an appointment for me. He had an appointment for one, for me to talk to my cousin. But he had another appointment to me to hear a word from the Lord. And he was verifying and confirming it with signs and wonders. And I learned at that point in my life, saints, we need to constantly be growing in our faith. The devil will distract you with everything under the sun. He will have you doing everything that you think is important, but getting ready for the battle. Because the battle is surely coming in our lives. And we have to be ready. You think it was over for David? No. 2 Samuel 22, he was just getting warmed up because his whole family was about to go crazy. His own son was going to turn against him. You know the story. He's going to lose a daughter. He's going to lose a son. And then another son's going to turn against him and try to take the kingdom and he's going to be lost. So all of these things were just one right after the other, things and circumstances that were happening in his life. But what was it? God was making a great testimony. God was showing him and revealing him many things about himself. If it wasn't for David, we wouldn't have Psalm 23. If it wasn't for these experiences, we wouldn't have it today. But we still quote it to this day. It's not a psalm for the dead. It's a psalm for the living. How many of you know it? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, yeah. though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. We're probably missing some of it, but we're getting most of it. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. He also said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Who knows the rest of it? Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What a powerful testimony. He didn't get that because he is sitting on the, at home on the couch <laughs> drinking Pepsi <laughs> or eating ice cream like I like to do, right? He wasn't doing that. He was going through stuff. He was doing exploits. He was suffering. He was in the crucible. But God used him very powerfully. Amen. You know, saints, we need to wait on the Lord with hope. Not hopelessness, not with despair, but we wait with hope. This is what it means to trust in the Lord. Father, we're so grateful tonight. Lord, our faith and trust is in you. These are not just idle words that we say. Lord, we're trusting you.